What's up, everyone? <laughs> That's a freaky foreign language for what's up, everyone, in a completely more English language. Words. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Words is tough. Why are, we, why are we recording at this time, day, man? Because you took forever to show up. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, what did you guys think of our uh, previous deck profile, the one we did for Persia? Pretty, pretty freaking crazy, huh? Oh, man. Okay, this time, guys, we're going to be doing uh, Kagia, Tears of the Moon. Now, for anybody who can actually remember what happened in the previous set, that one elf chick is dead. Uh, yeah, feasting. Yeah, she's dead. So okay, Damon, what are we doing here? Alright, so this is kind of like a... It's a more aggressive version of it, but it can still be control, which is nice. Um, so, Kaguya, uh, Tears of the Moon. So it has a judgment for zero, which is amazing, but you can only do it if a treasure item entered your battlefield this turn. Energize for green and blue, or green or blue. Uh, you can pay zero, reveal the top card of your uh, deck. If it's a treasure item, you put it in your hand. Uh, plays ability only during your turn and once per turn, so it's kind of like an extra draw. Uh, so after you flip, she has a lot of uh, abilities, some of them are more useful than others. Uh, so if you control, I think it's three, yeah, three or more treasure items, this card gains barrier. Um, rest a single recovered treasure item you control, target J slash resident gains minus 200 power until on a turn. Uh, rest two recovered treasury items you control, produce blue or green. Rest three recovered treasury items you control to draw a card. Rest four of them. Uh, you can return target resonator to its uh, controller's hand. I don't use that one as much. It's still useful, but I actually haven't used it yet. And I actually haven't even used the last one, which is rest five of them. And it becomes this card becomes a 15-15 flyer. Yeah. Turn. Also, for anybody who's actually been paying attention to the art here, uh, and who has seen Yu-Gi-Oh!, which I think is hilarious. It's like uh, when uh, Yugi transforms into like the other version of Yugi, and he totally becomes like this crazy, awesome-looking teenager dude. It's like puberty powers activate. Turns into an adult. <laughs> okay, we have vibrations. I'm going to do that. Okay, so um, starting off with the resonators. I don't actually have any one drops in here, which is kind of funny, but he's actually you'll super see stressed why. about it. You'll see why. He it woke up this weird. morning. He's like scratching his face, man. He's it like, feels, Oh man, feels weird. But anyways, uh, one of the biggest hitters of the deck is, uh, adaptive or ancient automaton. Oh, I love this card. So it's a four, four and it gets plus two, plus two for each addition you control, which is amazing. Cause we have all 12 kimonos of 12 parts in here yeah and we're totally running three of these guys in the deck yeah. the one thing i don't like about this card and i've been talking about it since uh, the curse of the frozen casket is that they didn't make it a machine oh, if they did it like, would have been insane super op oh, man. super op but like okay i get it they want to keep the the game decently balanced <clears throat> Perseus deck is totally over p over p overpowered <laughs> but like this is just so silly man like why do we need a new classification has there been any other automaton since this came out uh, no. No, there hasn't. So, whatever. This is dumb. It's the same thing with the, oh, this is a magic stone, but really, it's a fire magic stone, so we're gonna, you know, split hairs over ridiculously detailed crap. Anyway, really nice card design. This thing's ridiculously OP in this deck, and you'll see in a second here. Okay, so next one is Willow the Wisp. It's a 1-1. One, one, uh, blue, white, has just barrier, flat out. Uh, when this card is a field draw card, Whenever this card is dealt damage, you gain that much life. Cool. And just like with the previous card, we're running three of these bad boys. Yep. We have a search mechanic in here, so we don't really need too many of them. Um, running four, Glistening Chick. It is a two-drop, five-five flyer, treasury item, slash bird. Whenever this card becomes rested by attacking, blocking, resting with Kaguya, whatever, you may rest target resonator. Yeah. And uh, one thing I've been noticing a lot for this set so far, just looking through the cards and the decks that we've been putting together, they really like this whole, um, like, duality of typings, hey? Yeah. Like, we've got those creatures that are also specific magic stones. We've got these guys, which are also specific treasury items, right? Yeah. Cool. So, we got four of those bad boys. Next one is Kaya Lunar Researcher. So, her in creature form. Uh, three job flyer. We're being interrupted! Okay, guys, we were actually just interrupted by a buddy of ours, Santa here. Santa, oh. not Santa, Jesus! Same guy. Actually, Jesus is just Santa in disguise. 
Uh, so, the last creature we were dealing with here is Kaguya's Lunar Researcher. Or Kaguya Lunar Researcher. Yeah. Damn it, what does it do? Uh, so it's a three drop and a uh, flyer. Uh, it can be one cheaper if you have a moon, but we don't do that. And then whenever a uh, addition is bestowed to it, you can untap it. And attack again, and then again, and then again. Awesome, we're running two of those in the deck. And uh, just as a bit of a plug right now, this episode is being fueled by McDonald's. All of your late night food from McDonald's. Please sponsor us, McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Say it one more time. McDonald's. Good. Okay, cool. Everything good comes in threes. Uh, okay, cool. So we're running two of these. This is Creepy Santa. If you ever run into somebody who actually calls him the guide to the ancient ice well, you slap him in the face and you tell him he's wrong and he's a filthy bastard. Yeah. Because this is Creepy Santa, and that's the only uh, name he goes by. Cool. And, uh, so yeah, this is why we call him Creepy Santa. Cool. Uh, and his ability is whenever you play a water chant or addition, target resonator cannot be blocked until the end of turn. God, I love this card. If I could, if I actually played blue, I would put Creepy Santa in every deck. So we run two Creepy Santas. Because you can search it out. Classic. Okay, what does this guy do, Damon? Uh, what is it? Arthur Pendragon, King of the Round Table. King uh, of the Round Table, I'm learning to read tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 12-12, uh, so this card cannot be targeted by fire, dark, or fire or darkness spells or abilities. Which is um, freaking amazing, because those are like 90% of your kill spells. Yeah. So like uh, the chimeras from that that one deck can't fucking yeah. can't touch it. Um, so also your opponents resonators your opponents control must attack this card if able. So if it's rested, they can attack. They have to attack it, and you have a way of resting it with tap uh, target resonator uh, gains plus eight hundred defense until end. Yeah, so you can just tap them to do them that, seven. and then he has to be attacked. Yeah, and if you have like a bunch of kimonos on it. Cool, running one of those. I think Dayman might have wanted to run more than one, but he couldn't find it yeah. in the shit show that is his card collection. Yeah. There, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody ever asks you, are there too many cards in the world? Talk to Dayman, because the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is where we get into the... Uh... <laughs> Didn't you have a cat at some point? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you. We, were, we never found Fluffy. No. Fluffy was never found. No. Uh, so how many of these bloody things do you run? Uh, it's come out of 12 parts. I have all 12. Oh, it shit. It says you can run 12 in your deck. Awesome. Okay, so it is called Water Kimono of 12 Parts. It is a one-drop chant, and it has the ability... That's you... it, but it's an addition. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Slash treasure item. Whatever. So anyways... I'm still playing magic in my mind, so I don't even know, man. <laughs> I still call things creatures and enchantments. I know, they just don't call it that because they'll get sued. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, wasn't there like a magic card actually called Force of Will? It was like a blue spell or something? Yeah, yeah, and then uh, magic tried suing Force of Will and they're like, uh, the name is like a public domain, so you can't do that. And then it actually gave Force of Will like, um... Uh, like a bunch of money? Did no, they count not a bunch of money, um, like... It was basically them advertising for them. Oh, nice. It was hilarious. Okay, 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 okay. Back to this thing. Okay, so its ability is uh, tap to bestow, and bestowed resonator gains plus 100, plus 100 for each water kimono of 12 parts bestowed to it, so it has to be on the same creature. Uh, and when this card is bestowed to a resonator, if you control a resonator with 12 water kimono of 12 parts bestowed on it, you win the game. So, That's have there been... That's never gonna happen. It's, well, it might. You never know. It depends on how lucky you are in the game. But my question is, are there any other cards in the game, to your knowledge, that have the such and such, you win the game con condition on them? Exodia. Not too many. <laughs> Exodia! <laughs> That's impossible! Uh, the 12 parts of, of Exodia. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's like... <laughs> What is it, the, the neck bones connect to the whatever? <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. God. Can you imagine if that's what they had to do in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, oh God, man. 12 parts of Exodia. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, so the next one. Yeah, classic. If you're not running this in a blue deck, you don't know how to run blue decks. Uh, this is Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic. Fuck. The biggest... <laughs> Fuck off, guys. I'm trying to say this. Uh, it's a chant. Quick cast remnant. Uh, target resonator loses all abilities and becomes a 400-400 bear until the end of turn. Just phenomenal card. Bear. It's a bear! Running four of these bad boys. Is you should run them bear? too. Hmm? Is it a bear who's running bear? <laughs> it's a yeah. bear who's running bear. Turn a bear into a bear. 
Where aren't there bear creatures in There's the curse? There's that, uh, like, five-drop bear from Curse or whatever. Well, like what, how strong is he? He's like a 12-12, and then you use this on it to just turn him into another smaller bear? <laughs> just a bear who hasn't been going to the gym? Yeah. Oh, my God. You've been in a coma for a month, Jim! You're all skinny now! We <laughs> lost them games. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay, so we're running three counters just in case, because we're running so many chance in this deck. If somebody drops a Heavenly Gust, you're pretty much... F in the A. But we use mo those more so for just like resonators or whatever. Yeah, fair enough. So it's uh, one white, one green, seal of wind and light. You know what? I'm not even going to read anything. it. Yeah, and then it's got the the moon, but we don't use that. So we run three of these. Okie dokes. We are running three of these. It's a blue and a green. It's called Millennia Bond. It's a chant with quick cast. Choose one. If you control a water resonator, J slash resonator, and another wind slash J slash resonator, you may choose both. Cancel target chance spell, shut the hell up. Draw a card or put a treasury item with a total cost three or less from your hand into your field. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're running three of those. Am I doing all the talking now, man? What the hell? I'll have a guess now. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you have to let Christ into your heart. And oh, into he your just kind of just walked in. He just walked in with McDonald's. Hey, guys. You ready for the Last Supper? <laughs> <Your dad> was, <laughs> so I was a fan of the burger in his beard. <laughs> all right, so next one. Uh, this is Kaguya's Moonbeam Butterfly. It is one green, one white, and X. And, oh my goodness, you guys have to see the full art on and this. And then it grabs an additional resonator equal to X plus one. Look at that. So you basically pay one extra oh, for beautiful. whatever you're going to grab, and it puts it into play. Beautiful. Okay, now that Dayman's done talking, I'm going to read the ability. <laughs> Search your deck for a resonator or addition with total cost X plus one or less, and put it into your field, then shuffle your deck. We're running three of these guys. It's amazing. It's a search. You should also run three in your decks. Basically, also, like multiple copies. This deck. episode is also brought to you in part by, you can't see it, this is just the top, by Dr. Zip. From your local Sobeys. Thank you, Dr. Zip. When you need to get somewhere to zip, call the doctor. Man, I should do commercials. Shit. You really should. should. All right. Okay, now for the stones. We are running four of the new dual stones that are specific to Kaguya. So there's Kaguya Stone of Sorrow. She's a big old cry baby. Um, if your J ruler isn't Kaguya, uh, Tears of the Moon or Kaguya Millennium Princess, this card enters the field rested unless you pay 300 life. So it's pretty much just like... What is it? Uh, pain land from magic. A pain land from magic. Uh, treat this card as a magic, a water magic stone and a wind magic stone, so it can produce blue or green. And when this card enters the field, look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back in any order. This is phenomenal. Holy crap. I, I didn't know. even know it did that. I Damn, know. dude. St stacking the deck much. So, for those, we are running four of the dual stones for white and blue called the magic stone of light vapors. Like vapors. Vapors. <laughs> and uh, the only thing about this stone, like the art is beautiful. The only thing that pisses me off is that they spell vapors in the American way. Tisk tisk, force of will. Tisk tisk. Hit up a vape <laughs> Dude, we get it. You vape, okay? <laughs> <laughs> dude, he vaped for our sins. <laughs> dude. Oh, dude, no hate to Christians out there. You, you guys, you guys do you. Uh, and then there's Magic Stone of Gusting Skies, and it's the dual stone for white and green. Cool. Um, yeah, so if you were to nickname this deck, what would you say, Dayman? I have no idea. I didn't think of it. Uh, Kaguya's The Power of Christ deck. <laughs> because of our surprise guest, uh, Jesus, joining us tonight. Um, yeah. It's just surprisingly aggressive, that's all. Yeah, it's yeah. like, who knew? You give a chick the access to, like, 11 more pieces of clothing than usual, and suddenly she becomes a total powerhouse. Yeah, I know. Also, giving her the ability to just suddenly go through puberty. <laughs> I just, I love that. It goes right back into the Yu-Gi-Oh theme of this episode. Okay, guys, if you, uh... <laughs> 12 pieces of clothing! That's impossible! <laughs> Okay, this is this video's already gone long enough, guys. Like, subscribe, do whatever you want. Call your mom, call your dad, tell them that Kagi is in town, and tell him that she tell him that she's pissed. All right. Okay. <laughs>